All right, you guys won. I'm making this a video. And to be honest, it was a long time coming. My second ever video on this channel was about Baver's Prime. I was a much smaller channel back then, so it's safe to say that a lot of you guys haven't even watched that video to begin with. It's pretty choppy and it's a product of its time, but as for the information relayed, I think it's still pretty accurate. But due to it getting a lot less traction than I usually do, when I put a poll up asking who would win between MV Godzilla and Baver's Prime, I wasn't really super surprised because a lot of you guys hadn't even seen the video to begin with. With. So I thought this topic would be perfect for shorts and um, let me just say these comments were not it like at all I don't want to get too into it But the greater point now is that Transformers is more relevant than it's been in a minute because of the new movie that drops today So it would be a perfect time to truly really dive into this matchup And yeah, I still believe Optimus slams obliterates even but I know some of you guys must think that's a delusional take I put a pull up between him and Iron Man this week and it was pretty comparable So it's safe to say that you guys still think he's fodder man so for all the naysayers just hear me out but before we dive into the slaughter i believe it's only fair that we give godzilla his props how powerful is the king of the monsters and i mean it's a pretty decent question he's had a couple movies a couple of shows so we do have a lot of stuff to talk about but before we do that i like to take the time to acknowledge today's sponsor being beast of the east collectibles seeing as how you guys clicked on this video it's safe to assume that you guys are godzilla fans and heck so am i but his merch is pretty hard to find if you're not like in the city or anything like that which is why the first spot that i always hit up is beast of the east collectibles these guys have a nice little shop online and they have a variety of figures they're a regular sponsor on the channel and they've given me all these things right here and if you're interested in even one of these things you can get these and more at beast of the east collectibles .com. they got a whole bunch of stuff they got evangelion king kong Gamera, Ultraman, and yes, Godzilla. And seeing as how I'm talking about MV, they have a plethora of MonsterVerse slash MV figures as well. They have Godzilla 2019, Kong, and they even have a new figure based on how he appears in GXK, where it you know, evolved and all. So if you guys find yourself interested in these products or anything that you know, you've know you seen, the first link in my description will lead you right to their site. Once again, thank you BCD's Collectibles for sponsoring today's video. And with that out the way, let's head back to our regular scheduled program. MV Godzilla is a character that I've scaled many times in the channel now, so let's just hop right into it. At worst, he would find himself in the city to island level ranges. This level of AP is drawn from his durability, as Godzilla can injure characters who have the ability to hurt him. And there's also statements in the verse that say that only a Godzilla, or presumably something of similar power, can penetrate his hind. But enough of that. I said city to island level, so you may be asking yourself, why? Well, it's because Godzilla casually no sells nuclear bombs, with it even being stated that every test during the 50s is actually an attempt on his life, meaning that he should be capable of no selling energy equivalent to 15 megatons. But this isn't the end of the scaling chain, as by the 1980s, it was stated that nothing in mankind's power could ever kill Godzilla, which would include bombs such as the Sar Bomba. But seeing as how the statement implies that nothing in man's power could ever hope to kill him, that should upscale him off the hypothetical bomb's full yield, which would have been equivalent to 100 megatons. This chain of scaling becomes even more consistent as even while extremely weak and immobile, he could no sell the nukes of the modern era right to his face. This is impressive as due to the proximity of the destination, as well as its overall range of blowback, and it's been calculated that this bomb would have had a yield equivalent to 140 teratons, which actually isn't even island level, as it's a large country level. To put that power into perspective, the TK extinction event was 72 teratons, so Godzilla in a near death state could endure a blast strong enough to kill the dinosaurs almost two times over. This sentiment especially is pretty ironic as Godzilla could tank the Permian extinction event, which in the MV was another huge meteor impact. This thing hit Godzilla right in the face and he just walked it off like it was nothing. The blast in question was massive enough to be seen from orbit and when calculated, this would get Godzilla's durability in the multi-continental ranges. This level of durability slash AP is consistent as Godzilla is stronger than the Mudo Prime, who could shatter the Earth's mantle at subsonic speeds, which gets anywhere from 1 to 15 exatons. And yeah, this is her hacks, but Godzilla can endure Mudo Prime's seismic amped punches, so you know, even though Mudo Prime might not physically scale, Godzilla definitely does. But for some good stuff now, Godzilla has shown relativity to Ghidorah, a creature whose mere presence results in the creation of massive super superstorms that could tear the stratosphere and even cover entire countries. And yeah, these storms are a result of Ghidorah's own AP as he generates them by flying verbatim, which would get Ghidorah's passive AP anywhere from multi-continental to even moon level. Godzilla scales as the two are consistently shown to be relative, with even Godzilla being able to tackle Ghidorah while he's flying. But let's move into the higher ends now. 
Godzilla during the events of GVK has a feat where he was able to drill into the Hollow Earth, which gets up to around island level if you ignore the fact that the King of the Monsters Atomic Breath actually destroys matter on a subatomic level, which actually gets the yield of the full beam anywhere from small planetary to just planetary. This is impressive as according to an in-universe Apex file, the yield of Mechagodzilla's Proton Scream is a couple thousand times more potent than the breath that they observe Godzilla drill through the planet. I mean, I guess you could just say Godzilla was barely trying here, but you know, that's not bad at all but it gets even crazier as firstly it would get mg's proton scream in the large planetary ranges and secondly godzilla while weakened and only at 50 percent power due to expanding a lot of energy while fighting kong as well as you know just drilling into the planet was still able to contend with this beam even seemingly stalemating it before mg had to pump it up and then even after losing the beam struggle godzilla just you know he gets a black eye and that's it seeing as how the beam was amped on top of its initial large planetary output and Godzilla was at 50% at best during this encounter and this would get Godzilla's durability and by extension AP in the large planetary to even possibly approaching those dwarf star level ends of power. This end becomes a lot more consistent as according to GVK Godzilla has a resting energy that's slightly above the whole Earth's entire energy output. To get a value for this we have to talk about Monarch Legacy of Monsters. As we know small pockets output energy in the petatons and using pixel scaling we can take that and scale it in relation to the model as seen in Godzilla vs Kong. And because of that, it's been determined that the Hollow Earth's resting energy would actually find itself in the Dwarf Star level ranges. And yeah, I know Monarch Legacy of Monsters Canicity is questionable, but seeing as how we're using a piece of lore from the films and then just taking a random energy output from, you know, Monarch Legacy of Monsters, it's not a really big deal in my opinion. Especially considering the black hole mumble jumbo that people would just like to take from it instead. From here though, Godzilla would become even stronger in the GXK as he just had the stronger base and then he would become two times stronger on top of that trying to evolve for Shimu where he would become stronger and faster than before but Godzilla has one more trick up his sleeve as he can unironically Kaioken times 10 amp himself in a state reference to be supercharged of all in the state Godzilla could tussle with a titan known as Shimu someone narratively implied to be above Ghidorah and a character that possessed enough power to freeze the entire planet Godzilla is also stated in the novelization to be stronger than he's ever been before seeing as how burning Godzilla's reference two sentences before the statement that would probably even extend to him but the author did say that he wasn't overall sure if pink Godzilla was stronger than you know burning Godzilla but he did reference that this new power that Godzilla had was much more concentrated and focused as burning Godzilla was the result of another titan granting him her life force and him literally just exploding all over the place Evolve can literally harness that level of AP into a spiral heat ray seeing as how he's already 10 times above Evolve and two times above base these multipliers would grant Envy Godzilla at best more scaling just deeper into the Dwarf Star level ranges. To get a range of speed now, and it's also really simple as it just draws from Godzilla's atomic breath. As the beam is stated to be composed of Shireng called radiation, which moves at around 75% the speed of light. And then you have many characters in the verse such as Ghidorah, as well as King Kong who can react to it and block it and suffer the sword. Godzilla can contend with Ghidorah, and Godzilla is just straight up objectively faster than Kong when he's trying to lock in. Stack that on top of the fact that Godzilla's evolved state makes him faster as well, and he would more than likely find himself reaching those FTL to possibly FTL plus ranges of speed. Obviously these stats are pretty good. A lot of great lore and calculations but this level of AP and speed is just not enough to touch Baver's Prime. So let's dive into that. Before we take a deep dive into the Bayverse to see how powerful Optimus Prime is, I like to thank a couple of people. As yes, while I did make an entire video on Bayverse Primes, I was a little rusty on the subject. I didn't have a lot of the scans on deck, and you know, I wasn't even the creator of those metas to begin with. So it's my pleasure to thank three people. First of all, P slash the Honored One. This guy's on YouTube and he has a Discord. But yeah, he was able to just directly slide me the metas. He added me and everything. And also, I like to thank Wayne Borg as well as Zeno, as as they are the main ones who pretty much made these metas to begin with from my current knowledge you know they helped me back then they helped me back on instagram these guys are really really good at bayverse inverse so in the description down below will be a link to P's YouTube channel as well as Wayne and Zeno's Instagram where they still power scale many topics to this day. I'm telling you some of these Instagram slideshows are pretty cool so be sure to send them some love. But with that being said let's talk about why the Transformers especially in terms of power scaling are more than meets the eye. 
Moving on to Optimus Prime now, we have quite the scaling chain to climb. For starters, yes, there's a lot of city block to city level implications for these guys. A lot of people seem to think this is like the cap for the verse, but it's just not. Because even trash like Starscream have been recorded to cause large island to even small country level explosions on the moon. And once again, he's trash. But to get into the good stuff now, Bayverse has many consistent multi-continental to planetary implications that stem from inverse lore and even quantified calculations. Starting off with some of the more out there metas, Megatron himself is stated to be a world destroyer. The Fallen, who's a character you're gonna hear a lot of in this episode as Optimus Prime scales above him. But yeah, he could endure the destruction of the Star Harvester, which produced an explosion that when quantifiably calculated would be in the exitons. But you can use lore to bump this feat up, as this construct's power is known to be able to destroy planets and even stars. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, Optimus Prime in the last night while weekend could slowly overpower the telekinetic powers and endure the electrical attacks of Quintessa while amped as well. Keep in mind she's a character who can move Cybertron which is a feat that gets into the large planetary ranges. Moving up the chain to the stellar ranges now. Obviously we kind of already talked about the Star Harvester but did you guys know that the Fallen could endure the power of a black hole as he fell into one and he survived. The stellar ranges are also consistent as Optimus Prime could tussle with Galvatron who was powered by a singularity and miniature black holes. I heard some of once say if you scale to an electrical socket does that mean that you scale to the whole thing to sort of say that this is like a well that he draws his power from to kind of make the argument that his base ap doesn't scale nearly that high well these constructs were reverse engineered from the devastator from the revenge of the fallen film who is confirmed by a guidebook to be as strong as megatron a character who optimus prime pretty easily pieced up so either way you look at it optimus prime would scale to these level of power even if you want to be difficult and yeah i guess now this is a good time as any to address this if Optimus Prime and the Transformers are so strong, why do they get pierced by military grade weapons? Even the previously mentioned Devastator was destroyed by an experimental railgun. So what's the deal? Well, the first movie makes it pretty clear that everything in the modern era was reverse engineered by studying the body of Megatron, a character who has previously mentioned scales decently high. If that isn't enough for you, the video games also make it pretty clear that the weaponry seen in these films is augmented Cybertronian tech, which pretty blatantly supports my premise that these weapons are not like like regular human weapons. You know, to say that the humans of the Bavers films are as physically capable of making constructs that are only on par with the real world is pretty ludicrous, especially considering how humanity in these films was smart enough to have created the black holes that empowered Galvatron to begin with, and they could even make a pale comparison of the original Allspark, or the Cube, for those of you guys who have forgotten some of the lore. And they say that even this pale comparison of the original Allspark could destroy the entire solar system. But yeah, essentially yes, humanity in the Bayverse films is way more technically capable than the humans of our real world and their weapons are just stated to be augmented Cybertronian tech or reverse engineered from literally Megatron himself. So these are fictional weapons, I want you guys to remember that, they're not like regular guns and missiles and stuff like that. Remember that experimental railgun that killed the Devastator? Well he had a synthetic singularity in him and this clearly alien s weapon that they just had on deck showed the ability to just plow right through him. So I don't want to hear a single comment talk about guns pierce them because these same weapons would probably pierce monsters Godzilla as well, if not just straight up kill them. But going back to the Allspark now, as that's a source of energy that Optimus actually scales to, so let's get into that. As previously mentioned, even pale comparisons of the original one are known to be able to destroy solar systems, which is fair enough as it stated that the original cube was what created the entire universe. It's called the greatest force in the universe as well, which would already upscale it off constructs such as the Star Harvester. Well, how does Optimus Prime scale? Well, Prime's Allspark is already directly compared to it for starters, and characters such as the Fallen are stated to have just blamed surpassed it, which is consistent as he's unironically extra dimensional. He stated to have the power to unmake creation at will, and on top of that, for the people that's like he's not in his prime anymore, that's a much weaker fallen that prime scales to. Well, even in modern day scans, it's stated that he has limitless power that he draws from. And another book just says that his energy source is just the Big Bang itself. A universal explosion. And if you know how big the universe is, even if he was drawing from even 1% of that power at any given time that Optimus fought him, that is still more energy than MV Godzilla consistently scales to, and Optimus Prime ripped this guy apart. Before I head into speed now, there are two things I wanted to address. You might be asking yourself some of these questions yourself, so listen up. If Prime scales to the Allspark, why did the Allspark 
pretty much obliterate Megatron, who Optimus during this time period scales relative to. Well, he had lost a lot of Dark Energon in this fight, and he was weakened. This is consistent as you have tie-in video games showcased in 2007 Megatron absorbing the Allspark perfectly fine in an alternate bad ending-esque cutscene where he's way less damaged, proving that these guys' bodies are durable enough to withstand the full energy of the Allspark. And two, if the Fallen is so powerful, why did he need a Star Harvester? Well, just because you have an AP range doesn't really mean that you scale to that in destructive capacity, so that wouldn't really inherently be an anti-fate. It's also the fact that it stated that despite them being extra-dimensional beings once again, they lack the energies just naturally siphon off constructs, which is once again is not really an anti-fate as well. Well, since Optimus is already outscaling Godzilla in terms of AP, let's move on to speed and explain why he's much faster as well. Off the bat, like Godzilla, he has the same relativistic ends of scaling as he scales to well himself, as he could travel to space at these speeds as shown at the end of Age of Extinction, and he scales to Jazz as he can box with the strongest versions of Megatron, and literally this is how Transformers 1 Megatron did Jazz. Tron, come here. Anyways, Jazz is a character who is stated to be able to reach near light speeds, granting him relativistic plus combat speeds and reaction time, as he would need to be manually steering himself while traveling at these speeds. But you can get super crazier as Optimus Prime in the same film can just straight up catch Megatron while he flies in his flight mode, the same mode in which he could just travel throughout the infinite universe, searching through countless solar systems and a myriad of galaxies. I'm gonna do Fatzilla a favor and not take these statements hyper literal, despite it being pretty, you know, stamped, it's elaborated three times and two of those three times it's in the same sentence and I'm gonna just assume that he traveled throughout a quantifiable size universe something similar to our very own granting the leader of the Decepticon speeds massively faster than the speed of light now for some comments. Sure, Prime may be stronger and faster than Godzilla, but how can he beat him or even land a critical blow as Godzilla is well too big? And well, Optimus can just beat him down over time and just piece around him similar to how he fought the Driller, a construct the size of three entire football fields. And he was able to evade its blows while being attacked from multiple angles at once. If anything, beating Godzilla would be easier as Prime is much stronger and much faster. As while the Driller could somewhat react to Prime at relative speed, Godzilla would just not be able to, like objectively. And for the people who actually still care about weight, despite me making it pretty clear multiple times now how it really doesn't matter, yes, Prime's blows would cause Godzilla blowback. As Prime physically scales to Quintessa's telekinetic powers, which can move entire planets. So if Prime were to hit Godzilla somewhere in the face, Godzilla's face is swaying back. Like imagine yourself trying to catch an especially fast fly, but the fly had the punch of Mike Tyson. And let's say that he was physically strong enough to push something like a house. Yeah, you're not winning that fight. And Godzilla just isn't either. Godzilla has a lot of wank that can kind of be used to get him to the same level of AP, if not higher. Heck, I know a lot of people who are still desperately clinging on to that crossover with Superman, despite it not even being canon to begin with. But at the end of the day, that stuff is just wank, and not nearly as consistent as Optimus Prime stuff. And this is why I implore you guys to stop using the eye test when analyzing two pieces of media that aren't even in the same verse. Because that's two entirely different narratives with different lore and you know stuff like that of the sort. You can't be like, oh Godzilla wasn't hurt by missiles, but the Transformers are. Especially when there's lore in that canon to suggest those weapons aren't regular weapons. I mean, come on guys, it's literally said in the movie. Fact is, you're looking at the source of the modern age. Microchip, lasers, space flight cars, all reverse engineered. By studying him. So with that out the way, yes, Optimus Prime from the Bayverse would demolish Godzilla from the MV. But as always, this isn't a dictatorship. If you guys have your own opinions, be sure to let me know. Do you agree with this video and found it awesome? Be sure to let me know. I love the Bayverse, but due to how busted they are, it's pretty hard to find matchups for them. But if you guys really want Transformer scaling, let me know. Because if the support is there, I'll make the effort. And heck, once again, if you disagree and have a debunk for everything I just said, please write something in the comments. Let me know. Maybe I'm just an optimist hard. But as always, I'll see you guys next week. But until then, stay BG fans.